Well, here we are live, Facebook again for Sunday morning Bible study, and so glad to see you guys. And we're going to see, uh, what, look, do I have to forgive? You know, that's a question that, that a lot of people ask in their heart. You know, I've actually had people right out ask me, do I have to forgive, you know, somebody or something? Or uh, And the question is, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to forgive. You don't have to, to let it go. You don't have to release them. You can just hold on to it for as long as you want to. But, uh, <clears throat> by the way, this is some poison. This is poison. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to, you know. <sighs> mm. oh, <God. laughs> that poison. Uh, I, but, you know, you don't have to forgive people. You know, you can always hold on. You know, you may have the right to not to forgive, you know. And, and you may say, well, you know, I really... I, you just don't know what they did to me, Pastor Terry. You just don't understand what they did. And, and you know, maybe I don't. But, you know, you don't have to forgive. But <clears throat> do I have to forgive? Not really. But you, oh, by the way, this is poison. Poison. Yeah. Mm. Oh. <laughs> That's some nasty poison right there. Well, Let's get into the Word of God, and let's see what the Word has to say about us forgiving. And, of course, we're going to start off with what Jesus, the prayer, Jesus taught us to pray, and this will be in the Gospel of Matthew, and verse uh, chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 12. It says, of course, we know the prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And listen to what this says. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, hmm, I kind of put a twist on that thing, kind of put me in responsibility of forgiveness. Uh, do, do I have to forgive? Well, you, you don't really have to. This, by the way, is poison. Poison. Mm. Oh, that's some nasty poison. Look, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, let's get into the scriptures a little bit more. We're going to open up our... our uh, uh, notes here today and we're going to see God what God's got to say to us in our notes. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6 14 and 15 as you go on down just kind of slide down a little bit in your Bible or on your phone it says for if we uh, if for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive men their trespasses neither would your heavenly father forgive you of your trespasses. Now, I'm going to let you know, this is the way, it, I, you know, when I first read that, I thought, man, that is just terrible because if I don't forgive, then that means that I won't be forgiven and I don't want that for my life. I want God's forgiveness in my life. And, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm, I'm thinking that God's sitting up on the throne like this, you know, kind of looking down at me at the, with the side of his eye and saying, man, you sure have, you aren't holding, you're holding that unforgiveness in your heart. So I'm going to not forgive you. Well, that's not really the way God's doing it. The way God's doing it is he's saying, well, wait a minute, by, by the way, this is poison. And, oh man, that's some nasty poison. But when God, you know, what, what the scripture is actually saying is this. God's saying, if you don't forgive, I can't forgive you. You ever heard this, the thing that what goes around comes around? Of course, the scriptures, the way we look at it in the scriptures is what you sow, you reap. So if you sow unforgiveness, then you reap unforgiveness. And if God were to forgive you, then what's going to happen is 
is he's going to break his word. Whatever you sow to someone else is going to come back to you. And until you make that seed a rotten seed by your words and by your actions and put a new seed in the ground, that's what's going to come into your life. Listen to me. This is so important. You know, somebody says, well, Brother Terry, I just wished you would preach on prosperity. You know, let's preach faith. Let's just preach faith on prosperity. I am preaching prosperity because let me tell you, the thing that will stop the prosperity in your life, the fastest is unforgiveness, strife, contention, <clears throat> offense. That will stop everything that God's able to do for you in your life. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Early morning. But listen, you want to be prosperous? One of the first things you got to do is to say, I'm going to be a person who lives a forgiving life. I'm going to forgive immediately and I'm going to learn how to do it. But this is, we, we're going to go into this thing and I want to show you exactly what forgiveness is. Listen, I want to say this again. The, it, forgiveness has nothing to do with emotion. Pat yourself on your heart and say, forgiveness has nothing to do with emotion. Now, unforgiveness does. It has a lot to do with emotion. In fact, it, it, it rouses your emotion. It causes your emotions to go all over the place. Unforgiveness does have a lot to do with emotion. But forgiveness has nothing to do with emotion. It has everything to do with decision and with choice. And once you make that decision and you choose to forgive them, then you'll start seeing a result in your life that causes healing to come, <clears throat> not only to your relationship, maybe, but to you. Oh, by the way, this is poison. Mm. Oh, man. You know, so when you read the scriptures, it says, but if you do not forgive your men their trespasses, neither would your heavenly father forgive you of your trespasses, means that God, you, God's not going to involve himself in your unforgiveness. He's not going to involve yourself in the seed you've sown for your life. Now, I've been holding this glass up and I've been saying this is poison. It's actually grape juice. And thank goodness it is because, see, if I were taking poison, I would be uh, killing myself, right? I mean, it would be something that I'd be doing to myself and, and I'm, I'm harming myself. Well, that's what unforgiveness is like. It's like saying, this is poison and you drink it. And then you point your finger and you say, and I hope it kills you. That's what unforgiveness is. Unforgiveness doesn't hurt the person you have unforgiveness toward. It hurts you. It causes you sickness. It causes your finances to be in disarray. It causes your peace to be gone. It causes your joy to not be there. It causes you to be living in turmoil and troubles. <clears throat> so when you have unforgiveness in your heart, and you know what? Listen to me. Unforgiveness can also be toward an agency or toward other things. It's not just a person. Just if you have a hardness in your heart against something, that's bitterness. Bitterness, when it comes in, it's like a root and it grows up and it, then it defiles you. Well, that you don't want that or it poisons you. You don't want that. So you want to know how to forgive somebody. And I'm going to let you know, believe me, most people, most Christians don't understand what true forgiveness is. Because, see, forgiveness, again, has nothing to do with emotion. It has to do with decision. It has to do with choice. Unforgiveness has everything to do with emotion. It really does. It'll, it'll just tear you up. Now let's go into an, another scripture. Judge not. It says Matthew 7, 12. Now look what it says. It says, judge not that you be not judged for with what judgment you judge, you'll be judged. 
and with what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, this is the, uh, a good scripture to show you that if you choose not to forgive, if you choose to judge that person and say, listen, you've done this to me, you violated me in word or action or in deed, I, I have the right to have unforgiveness towards you, to hold this resentment towards you, I have that right. Well, if you do that, you're violating the scripture, you're judging them. And it says, judge not unless you be judged. It says, for what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with what measure you meet, it will be measured back to you again. So if I have unforgiveness in my heart, then and I, it's towards someone or towards something, then I, that what I give will be given back to me. That which I judge, how I judge this will be given back to me. And somebody said, well, yeah, but you, they did wrong. They did me wrong. You just don't understand, Pastor Terry, what they said to me. You don't understand what they did to me. Listen, I can tell you, there's hardly a person on this earth that's been violated as much as I have. <laughs> and uh, believe me, the reason I understand this forgiveness is because I lived through it. I lived through it. It, it almost brought... It almost brought destruction in my life and in my children's life. It almost brought that. But you know what? I learned how to forgive. And <clears throat> when I did that, <clears throat> God turned everything around and he made things right. And so I want you to have the same thing in your life. I want you to be blessed in your life. Let's look at another scripture. And judge not, it says, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Mark 11, 25 and 26. <clears throat> Look what it says. Y'all excuse me this morning. My <clears throat> throat is not doing well. But anyway, and it says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your heavenly father may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. What is unforgiveness will all for sure and in every way hinder your prayer life. Some people say, well, you know, I've been praying and praying and praying. I've been praying so hard. <laughs> you know, I pray so hard. Well, let me tell you, and I don't get my answer. Maybe you need to start examining what your heart. Maybe you need to start looking and seeing if there's something that you're holding against somebody or you have a hard feeling against somebody and you won't let it go. You won't release it. Let's kind of look at it and, and say, Lord, what is it? What is it that, that I'm holding? What is it that's going on inside of me? Because he says that when you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Didn't say if you had anything against some people, you forgive them. Everyone. There's not a person that it, 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 that's violated you in word, action, and deed that you can say, I'm not going to forgive. Well, if you can say that, you can say, I'm not going to forgive, but you can also drink this poison and it'll harm you, not the person you hold in the unforgiveness toward. <clears throat> so if you want your prayers to be answered, then let your heart be filled with forgiveness. And, and again, forgiveness isn't emotional. It has nothing to do with emotion. It has everything to do with decision and choice. Unforgiveness has a, everything to do with emotion. It just will make you emotionally a wreck. Look, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Let's look at this scripture. Uh, come on up, scripture. It says, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted. Listen to what it's saying forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Now listen, God forgave you of your sin before you even desired to have the forgiveness. What he did was, is he made a choice. He made a decision. There was a decision made. I'm going to send my son into this earth as a man and I am going to send him to the cross. 
And not only that, I'm going to put upon him the sin and the iniquity of everybody. That which I detest, this is what God's saying, that which I hate the most, I'm going to put it on Jesus. I'm going to put it on him because he's able to pay the price for it. And those people who have sinned or who sins I put upon Jesus, which is yours and mine, I will forgive them totally of those sins. I'll release them because they've been paid for by Jesus. Well, listen, the same way that God forgave us, we're supposed to forgive everybody else. We're supposed to be loving, kind, tenderhearted, and forgiving one another. So that means this. If somebody has done something wrong to you in word, action, or deed, <clears throat> then that means that what you've got to do is make a decision first. I am going to forgive them of what they did for to me. And the choice is I choose to release it and let it go. Somebody says, well, I've done that, but you know, they, you know, I, I just can't seem to get it out of my mind. Well, I'll tell you, you haven't done it because once you do it, once you truly release it, it's gone. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a, a, a little story about with me in my life. I, I had a, a person that I, I did home improvements uh, for years. <clears throat> I had a person who uh, wanted me to take the roof off their house, put a new roof on and paint. Uh, repair right and paint everything on the outside of their house. And so I went and, and, and picked up the roof and shingles and saw that there was two layers. So I charged them for tearing off two layers. And then when I got there, I uh, started tearing it off. There was actually three layers of shingles. Well, I didn't charge them anything extra. I said, well, you know, I've already given a price. You know, I gave them my word. So I take off the shingles, I repair right, and I put them... Um, um, you know, I paint and everything's beautiful on the outside. And then I get a draw from them for doing the right and the paint. And then I'm starting to put in the roof on and get all the roof put on. And then all of a sudden, one day, I mean, I come, I get through and I go to collect the money. And the woman, the woman, the wife, she comes out with this book. And she says, you, you put the nails in the wrong place on, in, on the shingles. You're not supposed to put them here. You're supposed to put them there. And in reality, is I found out that the book was from her uncle who lives in the north. And there you have a hard freezes. And so therefore, the nail goes in a different place than what it does here. And of course, she wouldn't pay me. $2,680 is what they owed me. Well, I'm going to tell you, I got upset. I mean, I was wanting to take them to court. I was wanting to do everything in the world against them. I even thought about taking a, a drill a, and going and drilling holes in the roof. You know, I, I mean, I was really getting angry about it. I was upset. I mean, they violated me. I, I put all this work in. I even did free work for them, and they still wouldn't pay me the money. And I got married. I was so angry. And, and then, then the next thing you know, I the next job I had, I had to pass. I didn't have to pass the house, but I had to pass the road that you would turn off to go to their house. And and every time I got close to that road, I mean, these feelings just started going inside of me. And, and I, I mean, just it's almost to the point of hate. And then I, and the, the next day I come by the same thing. And then all of a sudden one day I drove by and it, it happened. I stopped, pulled off the side of the road and I said, now, Father, I have got to get this out of my system. You have to heal me. I need to be healed of this. He says, I'm not the one who's the problem, and I'm not the one who's the answer. Hey, you're the one's taking the poison. <clears throat> I said, well, what am I supposed to do? He says, forgive them of the debt they owe you. And all of a sudden, it popped in my spirit. I'm supposed to release them from that $2,680 dollars as if they don't owe me at all 
See, I don't, we don't owe God anything for our sin. He is paid for in full. <clears throat> so I said, I, I actually stopped right there. I was outside walking around the truck, talking to God about this thing. At the, at the turn where I would go to their house, and he shared this with me, and I stopped. I put my head, arms on my my truck, and I leaned my head down, and I said, Lord, I release them of the debt. <clears throat> I make the choice and the decision to release them of the debt of that $2,680. They owe me nothing. Even if they came up to try and pay me that money, I wouldn't take it because they owe me nothing. Now, did they violate me? Yes. Did they do wrong? Yeah. <clears throat> but when I did that, immediately I got a release in my spirit. And the next day when I rode by, no ill feelings. I, in fact, I raised my hand up toward the road and I said, you're released from the debt in the name of Jesus. And then that week, or two weeks, the next two weeks, I actually made five times more than what I had released them from the debt of. God blessed me. Otherwise, I would have been struggling. I would have been taking the poison of unforgiveness. But I chose and made that choice to forgive them and to love them and to be tenderhearted and kind to them. And what's really crazy is all of a sudden one day I'm in the store and the husband comes walking by me in the store and I say, hello, how are you doing? And he's with a real ugly look, told me I'm doing okay and walked away. And then I realized that in me, I didn't have that feeling. You know what that feeling is, you know? where you got something against somebody and you just can't stand to be around them or look at them. <clears throat> I didn't have that feeling in my heart. And I just raised my hands in the store and said, thank you, Lord Jesus. You have shown me how to be totally free from this unforgiveness and the poison that comes along with it. <clears throat> we need to be forgiven one another. And if you've got something against somebody and you've got troubles going on in your life, you might be that might be the reason the troubles are there is because you refuse to forgive. Colossians chapter 3. Let's look at this. This is a good one. It says, therefore, Colossians 3.12, therefore, as elect of God, holy and beloved, that's who we are. We're the elect of God. We're holy and we are beloved. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Put on tender mercies. That's what we need to do. Put on tender mercies, kindness, and humility, meekness, and long-suffering, bearing with one another, or, you know, the guy that you're just having a hard time with, you know, bearing with them, <laughs> bearing with one another, and, and it goes on to say, and forgiving one another, if Anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. So if you got a complaint against somebody, you got to forgive them. You need to forgive them. Even the way Christ forgave you, you ought to forgive them. <clears throat> That's what we need to do. But put, uh, But above all these things, put on love which is the bond of perfection. And let peace, the peace of God, rule in your heart. Let me tell you something. If you don't forgive, you don't have that peace ruling in your heart. You lose the peace. And let the peace of God rule in your heart to which also you are called in one body and be thankful. <clears throat> Amen. So therefore, if you want to have the peace of God ruling and reigning in your heart, you've got to put on this mercy. You've got to put on this kindness. And you've got to be a person who's truly willing to forgive and release. That means that whatever debt you feel they owe you, you've got to say, I choose to release them from that debt and there'll be no penalty paid. Whenever I forgave that person that debt, 
I made the decision to forgive them that debt. I released them from that debt, forgiving the debt as if it was never a debt against me. And so therefore, they never had to pay me. I made the decision. I released them from the debt. I released them from the payment or the penalty of the debt. That is forgiveness. And here's, here's the thing. If you still have in your heart that they owe you something, you haven't forgiven them. You haven't forgiven them. You know, if it comes, if you keep talking about it or you keep talking about them, that is part of the penalty. You know, some people say, well, this is, what, I, I, I just don't understand what they said to me. You don't understand what they did to me. It doesn't matter what they said or what they did. What do you want? Do you want the poison and let it defile your life? Or do you want to release them, make a decision to release them and not have them pay a penalty for what they've done and be free from that? Which one do you want? You know, there's people that are sick today. They're sick in their body today because of unforgiveness. And they they don't understand why they're sick. They think, well, you know, in a lot of times you, you, you'll see it in, in, in the joints and arthritis where they, it just stiffs them up. And, and, and I've seen people that, that, you know, they had this arthritis and they forgave somebody. They finally found out what was going on. They truly forgave them and God healed their arthritis. Listen, you can be healed from all diseases, but let, let me tell you, unforgiveness will stop the healing power of God from coming into your life. It'll stop it in a minute. And if you got anything against anybody, any complaint against anybody, well, forgive them. Let it go. Listen, it's not worth it. We're, we're, I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter 18. And we're going to start in verse 21, Matthew 18, 21. And this is this, Peter asked this question. Basically the same question I got up here. Do I have to forgive? And look what it says. It says, Peter came to him, to Jesus, and said, Lord, how often shall I forg uh, shall my brother sin against me and I forget him, forgive him? How, how many times should I forgive him? Uh, up to seven times? And Jesus said, answered and said to him, I don't say uh, to you up to seven times, but up to seven times 70. That's 400 and 90, right? 490 times to forgive them. And, and you know, listen, if this was a in a day, how many of you ever had anybody violate you 700 times a day? You know, how many, how many, 470 times, 470. How many of you ever had anybody violate you 470 times in a day? Well, I, I haven't. Uh, most people, when you get violated, you, you get away from them. Uh, as fast as you can. But this is what Jesus is saying in reality. There is no limit. You don't say, I'm going to forgive you seven times. There's no limit. You forgive them all the time. You say, well, you know, that. why should I give them that kind of a break? Look, you're not giving them a break, poison. You're giving yourself a break. You're. <laughs> Jesus is saying, Basically saying to you, I, I'm not saying seven times because when you get to the eighth time, you just took the poison again. You just drank the poison. I'm saying to you, seven times 70. I'm saying to you, more than they'll ever violate you. I've never had anybody violate me that many times. It says, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain man. This is what Jesus' story is. Now he's, he's still talking to Peter. It's like a certain a certain king who wanted to settle all his accounts, all his debts that he had with people. And then what he did was is this. He said he called his servants together. And then he, he says when he had began to settle the accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents. That's a lot of money, okay? And it says, but as he was, as he was not able... To pay, his master commanded that he would be sold with his wife and with his children and all that he had, that payment may be, may be made. 
Well, the servant therefore fell down before him and said, Master, he says, have patience with me. I will pay you all. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion. And he, what did he do? He released him and forgave him of the debt. He made the decision through compassion, through tender, loving, kind-heartedness, made the decision through compassion to release him from the debt he owed and from the penalty of the debt. That's forgiveness. When I release them from the debt they owe and the penalty that goes along with it. <clears throat> this is going on. It says, but the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a thousand denarii. That's like a little bit of money. Let's just say he owed the king $50,000 and this servant owed him $50. Well, just a big difference in the, the amount of money. So he laid hands on him and he took him by the throat and he's saying, pay me what you owe me. So the fellow servant fell down and, at his feet and began to beg him saying, have patience with me. I, have, I will pay you all. Well, the same thing, he said the same thing that he said to the king. And he says, and he would not but he went and threw him into the prison until he should pay the debt. Well, so when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. And then the master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant. When a person doesn't forgive somebody, that's what God would call them, you wicked servant. I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Should you not have had the same compassion on your fellow servant just as I have had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the tormentors. He delivered him to the tormentors until he had paid all that was due him. Now listen, so my heavenly father also will do to you if you, uh, to you, if each of you from your heart, listen, this is a key, from your heart does not forgive his brother, his trespasses. What did this king do to him? The king turned him over to the tormentors. What God does is he backs off and he says, I'm going to let your unforgiveness have its payment on you. I'm turning you over to the tormentors. The things that's going wrong in your life might be because you've turned, been turned over to the tormentors. So I said, well, you know, God's a loving God. He wouldn't do that. You know, God's grace is so much greater than that. No, no, no. Listen, you don't understand. There are things, and I'll, I'll do a message one day. There are things that will stop the grace of God. We, Ephesians 2 and verse 8, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith. Listen, faith is the way grace is appropriated in your life. And if you invoke forgiveness, you're not in faith. I can promise you that. You are not in faith. Because if you were in faith, you would be convicted by the Spirit of God of what's going on in your life. Right now, some of you are hearing me. Some of you are wanting to put this away and say, I don't want to listen to this message. Well, but God's making you listen to it. Some of you have, God's already started to witness in your heart who you need to forgive, who you need to release from the debt and the penalty of what they've done to you and to violate you. I'll tell you another story. Um, <clears throat> there's a, I, I had a house downtown that, it did, I, uh, somebody was renting, it wasn't much money that they was renting. And, and so all of a sudden one day they just up and left. I mean, they were uh, behind on their payments and they, they up and left. And then, um, I knew where they worked and I knew, uh, and I, 
um, was going to go and and uh, and talk to them and 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 try and get the money out of them and stuff or try and get something. And, but they just left the house, you know. And and so as I was going to go, I was actually on the way. The Lord spoke to my heart again. He says, "I want you to forgive them of that money. I want you to forgive them of that debt that they owe you." <clears throat> and so I I. <laughs> I pulled over to the side of the road and I, I said, okay, Lord, I'm making a choice. I'm making a decision to forgive them of that money they owe me. And they don't have to pay me the penalty. They don't have to pay me a penny. And in fact, if they came up to me and wanted to pay me the money, I would say, you owe me nothing. I've forgiven you of the debt. I will hold nothing against you. And you know, when I did that, I actually felt so good. And what was crazy is that, again, the blessing came on me and I received more than what that money could have ever done. More, a whole lot more. The peace of God was reigning and ruling in my heart. I had compassion toward the person. He didn't have to ask me for forgiveness. I gave it to him. It's my choice. I choose to forgive them. You can choose to not forgive them or you can choose to forgive them. When you choose not to forgive them, you choose to hold that debt against them and a penalty has to be paid. That penalty might be as little as talk to the hand, or I'm never talking to you again, or I'm going to make you pay for what you've done for me. Make a choice. Choose to forgive and release them from the debt they owe you for their actions, words, or deeds, and choose not to hold anything against them, no penalties to be paid. Believe me, there's there's many times friends, friends have, I've forgiven friends, they don't even know it. I've forgiven family members, they don't even know it. I've released them from the debts and the penalties of what they owe me. There, there's, there's nobody that can come up to me and say, I know I did you wrong and I know you're holding it against me. Nobody can say that because I don't. And, and you know what? Even Even people that have owed me or should have paid me back, never have worried about it at all. <laughs> because see, I when I release it, I release it. I I don't care if, if that if if he and there's been other times that people have violated me financially. I don't care if they come back with that and interest, I will not take it. I won't take it. Because see, if I do then I violated what I promised before the eyes of God. I would release them from the debt and the penalty. You need to do the same thing. But you know, you don't want to be ending up like this servant. You don't want to be called the, a wicked servant. You want to be called a good and faithful servant. You want to be called the one that, that God says, I love you because of who you are and what you've done in your life. You are the blessing you are a blessing of God. Now, I, I, I want you to notice my background today. This is actually a, a picture that I took in Peru. This is at the ruins of uh, Peru. We were visiting there and, and, and looking at all the, uh, the, the thousand years old, you know, Inca ruins. And, 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 I, and I don't know whether it was an accident or what, but my camera took this picture and I noticed it later. And I said, well, you know, that's really crazy because every time I look at this picture, I think about the people in Peru and all the footprints, all the steps that we've taken over the years to minister to the people in Peru. And, and these, some, some of those steps are mine. Some of those prints are mine. But there's prints of people from all over Peru. And some, and some people from other parts of the world that were visiting there too. But, you know, you look at these footprints and you think, this could be my soul. 
This could be my heart where people have stepped on me all my life. This could be my my heart. It, 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 they stepped on everything I say. They stepped on everything I do. They just stepped on my life time and time again. Well, listen, how many of you know that if you take your hand, you could swipe it across that sand and it'll cause those footprints to go away? Well, I'm going to let you know this. You can make a decision to choose to forgive the debt and the penalty of all those people that may have violated your life in one way or the other. And it'd be just as clear and clean as if you take your hand and swipe it against that sand and it's no longer a footprint there. It's no longer where somebody stepped on you. That's what God wants to do for your heart. He wants to release you from the pains and the the hurts of unforgiveness. He wants to release you from the poison of unforgiveness. And I know he does. He wants to do it now. And what you do is you just go to him and you say, Lord, I pray that you would help me. Help me release this completely the same way Pastor Terry was talking about to where it's gone. It's released. I will not have them pay me any kind of penalty for what they've done. In fact, when I go to them again, I want to be able to see them face to face and not have that unforgiveness feeling in my heart. Pray and ask God for that. And then make the choice. I forgive them and release them from the dead. And even call their name out and say, Bill or Bob or whatever it might be. I'll release you from the debt and the penalty that I feel you owe me for violating me. It doesn't matter how great the sin was or how little it is. When you do that and you do it from your heart, remember the scripture says, if you don't forgive from your heart, when you do it from your heart, then you'll have a release and you'll see God's best and blessing coming into your life. And so maybe some of those problems that you have have had are having in your life will just totally be going away, vanish away because what the glue that held them there was unforgiveness. Well, Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that those who are holding unforgiveness in their heart will hear this and release it and will be set free from the poison of unforgiveness. But Lord God, they'll see that forgiving readily and immediately causes healing and health and peace and joy to come into their life. We thank you for this, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you guys. And uh, we'll see you guys next Sunday uh, for Sunday morning Bible study. We do do a Thursday at 12 noon uh, at the uh, Project Life. And uh, so invite you to listen to that too. Uh, God bless you guys. Love you. By the way, down here, at the, I want you to love, like, or share. You just got to poop, push that button. And what you're going to be doing is sharing it and or liking it. And other people can see this message along with you. God bless you and love you. Bye-bye.